as you know, we're more inclined to talk about the unusual things we encounter and usually the funny things we see in our job. But I think it'd be fair to say the reality of what we do is sometimes easier left unsaid. Any one of my colleagues in the room here could be up here today and truth be known, I feel more comfortable if they were. It's far easier for me to relate to it and find the words for our lived experiences. What I'm about to share, I do this with my own reservation. It's not only afflicted my own family, but it may have also have afflicted yours, but it needs to be said. Early last year, I was on shift as part of an emergency ambulance crew that answered a general call over the radio. The man initiated the pad up of our general call, which you may recognise as Priority 2 MBA or uncovered. Priority 2 collapse, Elizabeth uncovered. Priority 2 falls, or no, not uncovered. Priority 2 breathing forward, more far uncovered. And that list keeps going on. This was for a priority one, the highest priority of tasking. An immediate life threat requires us to be there in eight minutes whilst advice is provided over the phone until we arrive. This case was resourced from crews further away from our location. We were still allocated on a task, so we were not visible. We knew we were not only the closest ambulance, but we were the closest resource, so we made ourselves available. On this occasion, we were not ramped, and there was no COVID community spread. We just handed over our patient. Workload at the time had a coordinator trying to now cover another emergency case. They elected to task us on this one instead. The case was further away. We were not the closest resource. It was a lower priority, but still required an emergency response. This was a split second decision made to the pressure of the moment, trying to cover emergency cases with limited available resources. This is the gambit of an ambulance coordination, a state of sacrifice with no advantage in sight. General calls are asking, have I missed something here? Can we reduce our response times here? It didn't take much to get that decision changed. We arrived at the life threatening case in two minutes, only to downgrade the resource, and sadly, it was an obvious death. Some of those resources were now available to support another case. This has now deteriorated into a cardiac arrest and will later die on the scene. Our KPIs for attending to both of these cases were achieved, along with our required resourcing. Now that is a statement that you can make if you want to maintain public confidence. But it couldn't be further from reality. The first call for assistance to our case occurred earlier that evening, over three hours prior. We had no one to send. It was deemed an urgent, no lights and sirens response. It required attendance of an ambulance transport within 30 to 60 minutes from the time of call. The location was six minutes from the closest ambulance station. At that time of day, the Greater Metropolitan Area had 36 emergency ambulances operational with another 10 single response and emergency vehicles. All resources were being used. For three hours and 15 minutes to be exact, we had no one to send. The call had very specific details that raised concerns. It was for a situation of crisis. There was a threat of self-harm. There was a family member on the scene. They were too scared to return to the house because of the aggression, but they were willing to wait there for us. The patient knew that an ambulance had been called and there was no known prior knowledge of mental health concerns in the system. The patient was last heard from up until two hours from the initial call. An hour after that original call, the caller was contacted by us, informed it would be at least another 60 to 90 minutes. As we know, most of us in our room, this is a callback, no flight delay. It's so common now we're doing it, as we've heard this afternoon. 44,000 times a year because we simply do not have the resources to do our job. Now, I don't know about you, but in three hours and 15 minutes from here, you can get a lot of places in this state, but we couldn't get an ambulance here. 
It was more than enough time for a parent to drive 50 kilometres to check on their son. That journey took them past no less than 10 metropolitan ambulance stations, only to find him deceased in the backyard under the only light they had from the screen of the mobile phone. They knew it was too late. They contacted police, not us. What do we do? We send everything. We can't get there quick enough. I've never encountered this patient until that evening. They were a physically healthy young male. No pre existing COVID morbidities appeared meticulous. They had a love for music and art. This was not a planned event. They had simply walked out into the backyard, grabbed the first thing that would crudely achieve an end to their suffering, and on this occasion, it was a garden hose. He was left for his elderly mother to cut him down and then perform CPR. To this day, I still do not see how they did it. There is no ambiguity here. This patient still would have been alive. That evening, if we attended, when he first asked. We know we've got a problem, and it's a problem that impacts every South Australian. That problem is accessing an emergency ambulance when you need one. It's a problem that you can't fully appreciate until it impacts you, and that's what concerns us the most. For most people, it's a small comfort to know we're there. The expectation is we turn up and require in the moments when we need it most. We currently know that this is not the case. This is already on public record. Our response times are the worst on record, the worst they've ever been, currently well cemented in as the worst in the nation. There is a public report on the poor patient outcomes related to this problem, along with the ambiguity of whether it made a difference. Those that need us don't plan for it to happen that way. They also don't choose the occasion, the location, the timing. That they would be at the most vulnerable, most dependent, or most life-changing moment. We see far more than others have the misfortune of seeing in a lifetime. And this can occur in a routine shift. We know exactly how crucial your first breaths can be, how critical your last few breaths are. We know what it takes and who is behind us to ensure your health and well-being remains intact between each one. We share these moments with you in the places that are yours. The places of familiarity, comfort and safety, the places where you find yourself alone and isolated. We see the tears shed by families when we get this right, the fear encountered when it's in the balance, and the unbridled grief and bereavement when we are unable to change it. The reward for preservation of life knows no bounds. We are driven because it is you who depends on us being there when the time is most critical. We know how high the stakes are, how quickly it can change. And the normality of human responses in accompanying this, which can be inclusive of our own. It is because of your tear we wipe from your eye as you are alone, we are a stranger. But you have decided for us, not in words, not in writing, but with a tear you cry in pain to be palliated. It is you we support whilst performing critical interventions on your child, resuscitating them on your kitchen table the back lawn, the driveway, or at the school that you've just driven to whilst trying to allay your worst fears. It is you who reminisce with as your spouse lay lifeless on your carpet, how you met at a dance, your grandchildren adorning the walls. It's your acceptance that slowly sleeps in, seeps in, as you watch us clean and pack equipment away, your love now a memory. It is you who locks eyes with us when you know your mortality is imminent. Your injury is fatal as you lay slumped in your blood on your bedroom floor. You see the start of us bringing our all, your last image of what was your life. Your picture of happier times may appear in the paper. It's your story and it's your tragedy, a victim remembered. But this is never the picture of how we remember you. This is what you never forget. And you seldom mention.
It challenges us. It resonates with our values. It galvanizes our resolve. It has no expiry date. We try our best. We deal with the futile, the inevitable, and the expected. But now we are dealing with the avoidable. And this is what burns at our very core. Our resourcing is not meeting the demands placed on it. It hasn't for some time. We are seeing avoidable deaths. And it continues to occur. Now looking around the room, I'm still embarrassed to say this because I've only worked as a paramedic for 26 years. I still do know not know what words I can say to you whilst you stand there with us in these moments and we know it's avoidable. Thank you for listening.